Hello and welcome to the Just Win Baby podcast. Today I'm going to be breaking down UFC Vegas 93, which is headlined by Tyra and Perez. Um, very quick recap of last week. Smashed it, 20 plus units, bet five underdogs, four of them came through. Um, eight units on Imavov, Imavov ITD, bet him live at plus 370, killing it. So may that continue this week. Topology as always, first fight of the night, which is Shah against Costa. So I like violence. I like it on the Costa side more so. Um, I do think Shark could get a lucky KO, you know, find a lucky punch. But I think Costa's probably going to sub him, plus 800. Don't worry, my guys have already bet it. I'll give it out to the Patreon members beforehand. So you can all go and smash that line if you wanted to. But I like him at 145. I think he's got size. Uh, I think Shah's going to shoot. I think he's wrestling shit. Go see the Soriano fight. He went life and death of him. Not a good look. And yeah, Costa reverses him, um, takes his back, and rear naked jokes him. Uh, next up, we have Palastri against Knutson. I just think when the going gets tough, Knutson can rely on the grappling, cage pushing, uh, some wrestling, and she will win her decision as always. Palastri hits harder on the feet, in my opinion, and has better hands. But like I said, when it get, gets a bit um, suspect on the feet, uh, Knutson will implement that wrestling, um, that grappling, and make it a boring fight and win the decision. So I've got Knutson to win. Next up, we have Jacket against Wilson. This one's interesting to me. I don't understand why everyone isn't betting Wilson, to be honest, at plus 275. Jekyll is unproven at 145. In his last fight, um, he KO'd Alexander. You know, so what? Got a lucky punch, got the win, is what it is. But the guy lost to Jubilee, man. Um, made Jubilee look like fucking GSP out there, hitting the wrestling, uh, taking him down. Um, Jekka, he's a stand-up guy, throws big bombs. He's suspect in the grappling area. Wilson has a metrics advantage, and for all of Wilson's problems, um, he's a big fucker. He does have some jiu-jitsu, much better than Jekka's. So this is an auto play for me. Have to play Wilson. Have to play the submission also. Uh, reigns one and two. Um, Jekka could probably make 135 if he really wanted to. He's a lazy, fat shit. Um, he's unproven at 145. You know, people can tell you, oh, it's a auto play and they can make up all this bullshit about playing underdogs in other fights. Um, so I don't see why they can't do it here with Wilson. So, yeah, Wilson for me. Um, let's keep everything nice and short. Next up, we have Judas against Fernandez. I like Judas, obviously. Fernandez is my mush of the week. Um, the line has gone crazy. I got 187, was able to cash out and bet 365. Uh, without a loss, and then I went and bet it at plus 200 arm uh, sky bet because they were lacking. So the price now on Judas is plus 130, so I'm happy with my CLV, but of course the bet still needs to win. But win or lose, I'm happy with the shot. It's women's MMA, anything can happen. Fernandez is 0-2 in the UFC. She's shit, she's mid everywhere in my opinion. Sus suspect grain game, we've seen that against Judah Vicious. Um, I don't even think Judah Vicious is that great, so... To get Khabibed by her for three rounds isn't a good look. Um, Judas, you know, good cardio. We don't know what her wrestling is like. You know, we haven't got a large sample size. Maybe she takes Fernandez down. Who knows? But I'm not relying on that. I think she's better standing. She probably doesn't hit as hard as Fernandez. Fernandez has a puncher's chance. But Judas, she has the volume. She's going to push the pace. And unlike that Ernesta chick, I don't think Fernandez can hang with her in that department. I don't even mind um, Judas by a late finish, just purely by overwhelming her, putting it on her and making her gas. So Judas for the win. Next up, Armfield and Brady. There's a couple of outs on this card. I'll talk about them later. But this is, um, you know, another one where I don't see why people are planting their flag on it. It's super binary. You know, Brady, he's got no hands. He's going to push the wrestling. Armfield seems a bit retarded. His IQ doesn't seem to be there in fights. I don't like his process. Yeah, his hands have improved, you could say, but, you know, his competition hasn't been great. Um, what else do I like in this one? My official bet is going to be Armfield by decision. Don't like the number. Can't bet him at minus 180. I just don't like Brady, man. He reminds me of Marshall, the guy who got smashed by Dolgarian in Dolgarian's um, debut. Don't like these guys who are just pure wrestlers and don't have hands. This is MMA. Um, if you want to be a wrestler, go wrestle. Um, but learn some stand-up, man. 
So yeah, Armfield by decision. Maybe he gets his um, finish in round three. Um, I don't want any part of that fight. Maness against Flick. Um, again, binary fight. Flick needs his takedowns. He needs his submissions. He doesn't have hands. Um, he breaks in there. He quits in there. I've seen it many times. I like Maness to get it done. He should TKO him, but be careful. He could sub him. Uh, I think it's a tentative first round where Maness doesn't want to overextend, doesn't want to put himself in compromising positions. So he takes it easy and he finds the finish in round two. Next up, we have the fake mush of the week, Tagir against Van. I did consider Tagir and putting him the mush of the week, but I did my due diligence, done the research, watched every one of his fights, watched every one of Van's fights. And basically, it came down to this. I think Van is only 22. Um, he's still young. He can bounce back from this L. I think he's had his moment, you know, three wins in the UFC. Fair play to him. Uh, got a decent game. I don't think he has one punch knockout power. I think Tagir, again, like the Judas fight, sorry, the Knutson fight, when he gets in trouble, he can implement the grappling. Uh, he's at a metrics advantage. I think that he's likely going to sub Van in two or three after the, a feel-out round. Um, he could get a sub in round one, but I don't think so. I think Van's going to be safe for a minute. But yeah, round two, three, when the pressure gets to him, when these constant takedowns come, when he backpacks him, puts the uh, triangle on him, uh, the body triangle. I just think Van will wilt and uh, give up the sub eventually. I like a late finish for Tagir. Next up, we have Fuji against Quinlan. Again, this is another fight where people are planting their flag and there's so many unknowns. You know, they're going to tell you Adam's at fight ready now. Um, you know, he's improving. Quinlan's only just fought recently. He got TKO by Barlow. Adam would get TKO by Barlow too, in my opinion. Um, so I don't put too much stock in it. And yeah, he's at fight ready. Fucking get, getting blown by Olivas, who cares, man? Um, he's a bit suspect, Adam. He seems like a closet homosexual to me. He seems a bit soft. He definitely seems chinny. Don't like him. He's at fight ready. Big whoop. You know, is that the greatest gym in the world? No. Um, I think Adam loses, man. I think he probably gets knocked out. I don't like his game. I don't like his process. You know, when he wrestles, he can't hold people down. He hasn't got slick jiu-jitsu. I don't know his credentials, but I imagine he's a blue belt from what I've seen. So, yeah, Quinlan, I think... TKOs him, faster hands, um, you know, crashes into the pocket with a one-two or something and knocks him out, man. Adam's career's over. Um, like I said, he's 35, man. This is a desperation move to fight ready. And I think he gets cut, unfortunately. Next up, we have Asu versus Johnson. If the fight happens, I don't think it will. Too much of a weight cut for Johnson at 125. Never made the weight before. If he does, I think it will severely compromise him. I think Asu wins the decision. Everyone's going to parlay the submission for Asu at plus 200. Asu is a fake. I can't wait to make him much of the week one day, but this isn't the one. Um, that weight cut for Johnson is going to be too compromising. Um, and I just think that after a round one, Asu's going to have his way, but not find the submission. He's going to come close a couple of times. Johnson will stay safe. And Asu wins a, um, a, uh, a decision. Next up, Miles Johns against Andraj. Again, a lot of unknowns. I'm not convinced with Johns. You know, that fight against Cody uh, Gibson wasn't great. He got backpacked, nearly rear naked choked. Um, his cardio um, wasn't there, in my opinion. Andraj could be on the steroids still. I want to see him at the uh, at the um, the face-offs at the weigh-in, see what he's like. But yeah, my official pick will be Andraj. Don't know if I'm going to play it. Like I said, I want to see what he looks like, but... You know, people are planting their flag on John saying he's a lark. Yeah, he's going to do this. He's going to do that. They want to fade the 37-year-old who was, you know, getting hurt by Cody Stammen. I kind of get it. Um, Stammen just caught him in the pocket, man. Fast hands. John doesn't have that. He's a pot shutter, throwing overhand rights, winging it. I think Andrade is going to see him come in, and it's going to be a super close fight where the underdog wins. Next up, Almeida versus Kawamba. I like Kawamba. I like his overall game. He's got wrestling. He's got footwork. He's got cardio. He's got fast hands. I think this is his time to shine. I think it's a good bounce back fight from the short notice fight against uh, Oki, which he did kind of well in. Um, it was a split decision. Almeida is shit from Instagram. I think he's done, man. Uh, he's not training much, posting these weird posts with his family and shit uh, instead of training. I don't think he's for real. I think he's going to come in, look soft. Kawamba's going to have his way with him. Get the finish. I like plus 800 for Kawamba submission. Um, well, at least last time I looked. So, yeah, Kawamba all day for me. I think Almeida's done. And, um, yeah, Timmy's working. He's in Vegas with that Huey, Dewey, Cooper guy. 
And um, yeah, you can say what about him, what you want about that Cooper guy. I know he's, um, um, you know, trained many people who have failed before, Kevin Lee most notably. But he's working, man. It's kind of a hometown fight for him as well, Kuamba. And uh, I think he gets his finish. Next up, we have Ikram against Tricoli. Sent some shit on Instagram about this as well, man. Um, it might get cancelled. I don't know. Uh, I like Ikram to win by submission. Kamora round two, three. Tricoli doesn't need to be here. He just won a poker tournament also. He's got money. Um, hasn't fought in a while. Um, he's kind of mid anyway. He's a jiu-jitsu guy. Ikram's just better everywhere, I think. The submission for the minus uh, 1,000 guy is uh, a good look if the fight happens. And, yeah, at the main event, uh, no way, only 10 minutes in. That's a record. I think Tyra wins. Sub 2, 3, 4 is a good look. I think he's got Perez everywhere. Perez has had his moment. He's uh, surprised a lot of people. And I just think that Tyra's too much, man. He's uh, got power in his hands, albeit he doesn't throw much volume. Um, and yeah, Perez, he's at his moment, man. Mokayev, I do think was compromised in that fight, but still, I don't want to take anything away from Alex. It was good showing. Um, and then he gets the TKO in his last fight against Mines gone blank. Mateus Nicolau, Nicolau's chinny, man. He didn't know what he was doing in there. He looked off, he was skirting around the outsides, just waiting for Perez to put it on him. But fair play to Perez. Like I said, I don't want to diminish his last two fights. Everyone wrote him off before them. Saying, you know, he had an Akai store, Aki store, um, outside endeavors. He was dumb and he surprised everyone's a fair play to him. But that time's over now. Tyra's going to win. I like submission um, and I like rounds two and three specifically. That's your breakdowns. If you want my bets, join the Patreon. It costs you $12 uh, a month. That's $3 a week, man, for a card. It's fuck all. It's a cup of coffee. Or you can go and pay the likes of Lucrative £100. $100, sorry for you, Yanks, um, for his shit. Um, but yeah, I've got a Discord group going as well. It's super fun. We chat some shit, um, post some memes, have a laugh, all that good stuff. Anyway, link in the bio on Twitter if you're into it. Uh, but good luck with your bets regardless. And 